G'day guys, Jesse here from, needless to say, the True Footy YouTube channel. Hope everyone's going well in these uncertain times. Uh, I've obviously been uploading quite a lot of uh, particularly AFL Evo content lately. Um, but to be honest, as I said in a previous video, one thing I haven't really touched on too much is the whole coronavirus thing. We did do a, a little mini podcast almost between... Joycey and myself over Skype the other day, so if you're interested in that, go check it out on this channel. But, um, you know, generally, it's um, it's been a really awkward time, well, for everyone, to say the least, um, but also, you know, as someone who does an AFL YouTube channel, um, it's, it's really difficult in terms of how to navigate through this long period. It's like going through an off-season uh, that never ends, unfortunately. That's kind of how it feels. Uh, but we do have football potentially back on the horizon within a month, I'm, you know, hopeful to say. Um, to be honest, I think, you know, the AFL, I generally, as I said in the other video, has handled this situation fairly well in terms of, you know, putting the interests of the league up there, um, not above, you know, public health and stuff like that. But uh, I am, as a football fan, who would be devastated if the league didn't come back in the same way. I am grateful for the fact that they're doing their best to preserve the league financially um, and whatever compromise season we're about to get, within reason, I'm pretty happy to tolerate. So I think the latest word is now the WA clubs, um, and obviously I'm an Eagles fan, so this affects me particularly, but the WA clubs may actually have to you know, stay in Victoria, I think, for the first part of the season to play, you know, a chunk of away games in a row. And you know what? I think I think there's a lot of people clicking or not not clicking headlines and just seeing articles and getting up right about Vic Bias about why that is. I don't think they realise that the reason that might have to be the case is because WA has really strict border control measures and would force, you know, players to self isolate every for two weeks every time they came back uh, into the state. So you know, WA has actually kind of done that to ourselves. But I actually like the idea of it, um, to be honest. I don't really know what the South Australian situation is at the moment in terms of like having to isolate for two weeks, whether they've relaxed that. I think it's just WA that hasn't. But I mean, you know, I think as long as we know you're not playing home games at Marvel Stadium against St Kilda or something ridiculous like that, then I think it could actually work. The people it really will disrupt is the players. Um, but I think, to be honest, if it's, if we're saying, let's say, you know, the Eagles and Dockers play six weeks of, stead, of straight away games, you know, as far as a compromise goes, that's not too bad. Like, I, I think of guys like Tim Kelly who really came home to Perth because they need to be close to their families and the support network. So him leaving for six weeks, leaving his family behind, I do, I am sympathetic of that, but that could be, you know, the best we're, we're about to get uh, in terms of playing a football season. And like I said, the competitive integrity is really important. So if we're, we need to be playing at least 17 games um, and we don't, we can't have it, you know, teams missing out on home games because as soon as that happens, and I know it's because it's the Eagles as well, but as soon as that happens to any team, then the c competitive integrity of the whole season is thrown into question and frankly, I don't want this season to have an asterisk you know, put next to it. I don't think anyone does because that would feel very pointless. And I'm, I feel like once we get into it and we get 16 or 17, yeah, 16 more rounds plus, you know, four weeks of finals, I'm hopeful that it will feel like a proper season again um, because, you know, that's what we all want. And by the time that happens, you know, the grand final will hopefully have crowds. It looks like they're actually considering back-ending some of the blockbuster games of the season to the end of the year so that you hopefully get crowds. Um, it is going to be one absolute bitch of a fixture to rewrite. They're going to have to redo it. I think they're going to be doing it towards the end of this month, uh, which means they need certainty over, you know, where people can go at what time of the year. Um, because, you know, if, if any state increases their border control measures again, you know, we're going to have the same problem. You have to rewrite the fixture. Say if South Australia tightens their border controls and all their games are pretty much out the window and you have to play games in Victoria instead. And it's going to be a nightmare. So I'm just hopeful things go smoothly. And to be honest, um, as both an AFL fan and an Australian, we, uh, well, I should, I'm very grateful for the fact that it's not more complicated than it is. You know, I look at 
countries like England and uh, and America. I think the UK has been in lockdown for like two months, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with my Premier League love for Liverpool, two games clear of clinching with their first Premier League title um, officially. So that's pretty heartbreaking, and that that's that's another really good debate. And I really like people to let us know in the comments what they think of the Premier League title. If Liverpool get handed it, uh, two games shy of clinching it, are they going to have an asterisk? You know, we're kind of being robbed of. Oh, they would have. I'm pretty confident in saying Liverpool would have been centurions. They would have hit 100 points for the season. They've been robbed of that. Um, but you know, you could certainly make the argument it's got an asterisk next to it if we didn't actually win it. So, yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. But my big, great, white hope for the AFL is that within four weeks of playing footy, I can do some videos about, you know, who I'm tipping this round. Uh, you know, True Footy Reacts might come back. I really want to do True Footy Live again, where Busher and I in particular, and sometimes Joycey, would live stream the game. And uh, those were really popular towards the end of last year. We got some good interaction. But, you know, one thing I also wanted to touch on was the way this channel was kind of trending. And I am sure that not everyone loves to see the AFL Evo videos coming as thick and fast as they have been in recent times. Um, naturally, it's because there's not too much football content to talk about. And also because the AFL Evo stuff is really easy to, to smash out. And I'm actually really enjoying it. Uh, but what I have noticed is that the channel's making a slow and steady decline. I don't want to say slow and painful death because I'm hopeful it's not the start of the end. Uh, but obviously looking at the views, it's a little bit disheartening and, um, you know, that's not putting blame on you guys because if you're watching this, you've probably been, you know, watching a lot of the videos and I'm so grateful to those who have stuck through it through this uh, really awkward time, not a lot of footage to talk about. And for most people who aren't as obsessed as I am with footy, or don't have an AFL YouTube channel, probably not thinking about footy quite as constantly as I do um, and a lot of other people do, I guess. I mean, throughout this whole, you know, COVID sort of period from going into isolation and then uh, even going back to work, my motivation for the channel really hasn't dipped, um, which I'm really happy to say. Uh, I've been smashing out, you know, vids probably four or five times a week, which is more than I've ever done. Uh, I've been getting on podcasts, having some great guests, and in my opinion, uh, subjectively, I want to say, I've, in some videos, I've done probably the, some of the best content that I've ever done this year, uh, but obviously, uh, not really getting the reward for it, and I think people who don't necessarily have a YouTube channel uh, might not understand what I mean when I say that, because to most people, views might seem like a vanity metric, and in a lot of ways, maybe it is, uh, but for someone like myself who puts a lot of time and effort into this and really wants to make a career of it, to, to put some of my best effort in and uh, and not have it do that well over time for an extended period of time, it's a little bit disheartening. And look, it's the biggest first world problem ever because if my biggest issue during coronavirus, the pandemic, is uh, my views have taken a hit, I've got it pretty good and I'm well aware of that. Uh, but I just thought I'd be honest with you guys and say that I'm probably considering having a little bit of time off from uploading, uh, certainly at the same speed that I have been. It's just, uh, I mean, I've got a few other things to consider at work as well. Um, yes, I do have a personal life other than doing this uh, this channel um, that I need to sort of navigate through. Um, nothing nothing serious, nothing's, nothing bad's happening to me or anything like that. Um, but I guess, you know, it's just been that slow, gradual wearing me down over time of my motivation um, to keep uploading. And I think I might just give it a few weeks, at least on this channel. Um, if my creative spark hits me in the next couple of weeks, I might consider going back on the Jesse Thomas channel. Uh, link in the description, please get around it. Uh, maybe uploading a bit on there because frankly, I've kind of abandoned it other than a video the other day. So yeah, I, might, I guess what I'm saying is you might not see the videos come as uh, as regularly over the next little period while I sort of have a little bit of a reset, and I'm not the only person that's doing this. I know that the pair, Port Adelaide YouTuber, um, I think he's taking the rest of the week off. So just sort of realign, um, which is good for him, um, and that that might be something I need to do as well. And just sort of really think about the way that I want the channel to progress. Um, I definitely don't want it to be just AFL Evolution content. Um, 
which you might see a little bit more of because, uh, as I said before, like we, I smash them out pretty quickly. So I've actually got like five more games scheduled to, or even more like weeks of content still scheduled to come out. Um, but they, they've pretty much already been uploaded and edited. So you'll still see those. But um, And I do have a podcast coming up with Sporting HQ on the weekend. And I obviously intend to stay true to that commitment. I'm really looking forward to that. They've done some really good work and we'll be diving into all that. Um, but yeah, long story short, going to have a little bit of a break. I really appreciate everyone who's gotten around the channel through you know these, uh, these crappy times uh, for everyone. Um, YouTube and non-YouTube. Um, no, it's been really good. I must say, like, even even some of the videos that have flopped or, you know... Um, and to give some people context, like, I'm probably doing worse views-wise than I was two years ago when I had less than a 1,000 subscribers. So that's, that's kind of where the channel's at right now. Um, hence, you know, causing a bit of a reshuffle. But I, I'm still getting a lot of the same people comment. Some really, really nice stuff as well. Um, and I'm, I can't tell you how much I really appreciate it actually, or uh, every nice comment really warms my day. So, or brightens my day. So, um, you know, I really appreciate that, but just for a little bit, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a step back and to sort of end this kind of weird rant. Um, I would also probably take a good opportunity here to, if you've watched for this far into the video, um, to maybe hear from you on what kind of content you like to see from true footy. Cause uh, most of the content I do, I like doing, um, and I like that there's variety. Um, so I, th there's pr there's probably stuff out there that I like doing that other people maybe not as interested in, but it would be good to get a feel for it. For instance, you know, if you really enjoy the podcast as the, the, your favorite thing about the channel, uh, let us know. If you're enjoying the AFL Evo, uh, let us know as well. Because um, it would just be good to get a feel for what people want to watch. I do like doing the analysis videos as well, uh, but obviously to do a good video like that you need to put in the time um and obviously that's just going to take a little bit longer but that's fine if that's what people want to see um and that that's how i'll respond so yeah that's it guys that's all i have to say thanks for watching this video if you did if you haven't subscribed i really appreciate it through these lean times if you want to check out my other channel jesse thomas the link is in the description like i said otherwise guys i will see you sometime in the future take care